All right, so my Saunders Mad Mods has arrived. I don't know how many other people have already got their Mad Mods, but I'm kind of guessing I'm one of the first. And I'm currently assembling the bike. I've assembled quite a few bikes recently. There's a PK Ripper, I forgot the exact model on this, this thing's sick. Uh, it's a BMX bike though, not, a, not an electric. Um, and then I have a Trek Rail 9.8 XT over here. This thing is amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to put this thing together and I gotta tell you, man, pretty frustrating experience so far. Um, there are instruction manuals for basically everything other than the bike itself. Very strange. I looked through all the trash again, they're through all the boxes again. There's an instruction manual for the LCD. There's an instruction manual for the charger. There's no instruction manual for the assembly of the bike. Very, very weird. Um, it comes, it, this thing is re like, seriously guys, insanely heavy. I don't know how much it weighs exactly. I'm sure the Saunders website says something, but my guess is it's over hundred pounds. The UPS person told me it was 150. Um, and they might've had that weight from the actual scale stuff that it goes through, but really beefy, huge shock. Everything is sturdy and solid. I will say that. That's a good thing, but some of this stuff is just weird. Like I, I obviously need to get the front fork on and there's this cardboard thing blocking the tube and that, that thing does not want to come off. Um, you know, I've even tried, I'm maybe that I'm stupid for doing this, but I've been trying to even pry it like this and go all around and it comes off a little bit at a time, but I mean, it's just so tight. I don't understand why they couldn't have just put some like some foam like that around it. Um, and I've got to get this metal bar out and mount that fork. This fork's pretty beefy, so that's cool, but I need to mount that. Um, and there's some brackets and stuff over here and the front headlight. And uh, I need to figure out where everything goes. <laughs> so I'll probably come back in a little bit. I honestly don't, I'm, I need to look at the picture probably too. I don't even know what this goes to right here. Um, so I'll figure all that stuff out and I'll get the bike built up somehow, but I'll come back and finish this video when that's done. Thanks. So just, just a little update again, just a couple minutes later, I started ripping this thing. I started cutting it with a razor. I made like a cut up and then I took a big screwdriver and started jamming it down the cut and breaking it. And I was able to break off this huge chunk of cardboard. And I don't know if this cardboard is infused with titanium but my lord, I mean, this stuff is in extremely strong. It's the craziest cardboard I've ever felt. And we're still left with this huge chunk of it. And it's stuck. Like, it, it seriously, it's stuck on there. Um, I started trying to cut more with the razor. And you can kind of see, like, right there on the lip where, the, where that ends. It's, it's terrible. All right, so <clears throat> this is my new progress on this little annoying thing, and I want to put this on video because that's how annoyed I am with it. So I'm going to rip it off, try to rip it off on video right here. Ah! So you can see there is a huge lip, and if you look inside this guy, there's like lips in here too, and it was completely stuck on that. I don't know... Maybe if there were real instructions, it would have said like, okay, remove this collar thing. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm no, I have no idea, but it made quite a bit of mess trying to get that off. Scratches everywhere. Um, and now I have to figure out how to get the metal pull out. So I, I do think that this collar has to come off probably to get the metal pull out. Yay, I'll come back. Okay, so I'm officially a little bit of an idiot, and I wouldn't be so much of an idiot if I would have had instructions. Um, watch this. So, yeah, there's a an Allen, what do you call it, Allen bolt, whatever, there. And you have this, you know, rigged up metal pole that keeps it upright inside the box while it's being shipped. That pole needs to come out, and it appears that this is attached to the metal pole with that bolt. And I'm pretty sure I didn't need to cut the cardboard off at all. So <laughs> if I would have just took this thing off and took that off, I think I could have done it without doing all that cutting and all that whining and complaining. But I'm 
still standing by my whining and complaining because there were no instructions. Anyway, I managed to get this metal pole off. All right, so here's my next update. Uh, I was able to successfully get that top off there and then realized if I pulled the janky metal stand out, I'll talk more about why it's janky later, but if I pulled that out, this whole thing would fall over and it would be resting in a very bad spot. It'd be kind of a mess. So I actually have to get the fork on first. Um, and then I was like, well, how do I get the fork on? And I realized I had to first thought, again, no instructions, right? I thought that maybe I need to pull this, get this pole out and then move the fork over and then slide the pole back in once it's in the right position. And that doesn't work because it's secured at the base, right? Right. Uh, I can't point because my hands, but at the bottom, at the right, I'm gonna tap the camera, right there, it's secured. So I realized I had to pull the whole top off, so that's what I just did, I had to, I loosened all the bolts, one, two, three, four, five, and then I used a little mallet, and I tap, tap, tapped it until it came off. So that's off, and now I'm going to slide this guy, I'm gonna have to take that, stand out and slide this through the hole and put the top back on. Um, this is definitely a two man job. I'm gonna have to do it by myself. The bike might fall over at some point and it's insanely heavy. Someone could get definitely hurt. Do not do this by yourself. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. So I'll be back. Well, I wasn't wrong about this being a two man job. Um, the bike did not fall over despite what it looks like right here. I gently put it over, but this cable mess with the handlebars and all your brakes and all your electrical is insanely tight and it's, it wasn't immediately obviously uh, obvious to me about exactly the orientation of how the cables needed to be when I put the fork in. So I kind of, I had to just go for it. Um, the bike was, the back wheel is, you know, free to move. So the bike was basically running away from me as I was lifting it up to try to put the forks in. And it's it's really heavy, guys. I'm not joking. The bike's really freaking heavy. Um, so yeah, this is where I'm at now. I've got it gently on the ground. It's I think it's okay like this, the way I put it down. It's It seems to be resting fine. And uh, I'm gonna try to put the top of the forks back on and then get the wheel back in. Once, it, once I get the front wheel in, um, in fact, I might put the front wheel in first. If I get the front wheel in, then I can use this kickstand back here and stand it back up, and I think that will make life a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do that. All right, I'm just gonna film this next part because it wasn't immediately obvious to me how it worked. Um, so there might be some people that are like, man, I'm stuck in the same spot, and I also didn't get instructions. I'm watching your video, help me. So this is for you, that guy. Um, I thought this is a placeholder. A lot of times they just put like a piece of plastic that goes in between the forks. This is actually part of what you need to make the, the wheel fit. So uh, here's the wheel and you've got your hole that goes to the middle. And I was getting pretty confused because there are four bolts, one, two, three, four. And in my head I see this on the side and I'm like, that's not gonna expand enough to fit this little nub inside of it. Well, and what you do is you slide the wheel. It's probably pretty obvious to some people, but I didn't know right away. You slide the wheel in, you pull, you pull this, uh, bar out which hasn't that's the end cap part and then you put the wheel in and you slide this back through the middle of the wheel and you tighten that back up and you tighten these little four bolts back up so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now all right so I employed the help of this box which is not doing super great but it's doing the job it almost fell over one time but I saved it uh, we got the front wheel on it of course wasn't as easy as I thought it would be lots of brute strength struggling dropping things, catching the bike as it falls, etc. cetera. Um, but got it done. And then I just wanted to give you guys one little tip if you're in the same situation as me. When you are tightening up these four bolts, <clears throat> you get to this one right here, which while you're screwing your Allen wrench, um, you're spinning it to tighten it up. You're gonna be hitting into the brake caliper, uh, or rotor I should say. Um, if you angle, if you spin the wheel, to the right spot, you can actually spin your Allen wrench inside of the cutouts. So that will save you a little bit of time. Um, but next up, I've got to slide this guy back on and I already started it. And as you can see, I've got, this is already seated correctly. 
this is seated correctly, but if you look down this hole, the main tube is not. So I'm gonna have to try to bend it somehow to go through. Wish me luck. All right, all you crazy folks that have not tuned away from my video yet because you're annoyed with me. Uh, I do have the handlebars on now. And next up, we know something, I'm just, this is a reminder to myself and a reminder to you. I still need to tighten up these five bolts. One, two, three, four, five on the forks. But at this point, it looks like the bike could theoretically ride, but it still needs pedals. I need to put the front headlight on. I need to put the uh, head unit, the like computer system, that, whatever you want to call it. And I guess that piece right there, that black and leather thing, which I, I don't really know where it goes yet. I need to go look at a picture. It, maybe it goes over like the top here or something. Um, Anyway, I digress. I will get back to work and come back with some more progress. All right, a little progress update here, guys. So um, I've gotten pretty far. Um, I have everything up here pretty much dialed in and the head unit is up there. It's not plugged in, but that will only take one second to plug it in. I'm onto the part where I do the headlight. Oh, sorry, I also got the, the fender that's tightened up. But I'm onto the headlight and the, I don't know what you call this guy, fairing or something like that. And uh, Sondors did not put enough hardware to do this this part properly. And I guess I'm also assuming some things, so maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that you mount this onto these holes where the headlight goes. And it's I feel like it's kind of an optional thing. Some people might not want it and some people do. I, I definitely want to put it on. Wish it didn't come so scuffed up. Okay, sorry, I'm getting negative again. Um, anyway, you need four, you know, screws, four nuts and washer sets to do this job correctly. And I've got, you can see two nuts and two washers and two uh, bolts there, but we only, and we have two more, two more bolts, but the, the washers and the nuts are missing. So the weird thing is that there are two types of washers. There are, I don't know what these are called, but they're the type that crimp down, um, which I would assume we would need four of these. And then there are definitely three, I think just three of these flat washers. So you'd want four of those, four of the crimp down type, and then four nuts. And there were only two nuts. So two nuts, two, uh, two nuts, two crimp down washers, three flat washers. Uh, not the correct amount of hardware, something very simple and cheap, but very frustrating from the buyer's point of view. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put one bolt on each side just to make sure, because I, since I don't have the instructions, I still don't even know if this is the right way to do it, I'm just guessing, but I'm pretty sure this one goes here and then they bolt up with the headlight at the same time. So I will continue doing that, but uh, hopefully you guys that are watching this, that are following this because you also didn't, maybe you didn't get instructions or you just wanna watch someone else build it, um, maybe, you get all your hardware. All right, I am ready to wrap this video up. Um, I'll do my best to cover as many things as fast as I possibly can. So I did just ride the bike, pretty fun. Um, but let's go over a bunch of little things here. So putting the headlight and the front fairing thing on was ridiculously difficult. I think, I don't even know. I don't know when the best time is to put it on. I was gonna say maybe put it on Maybe you put it on before you even put the for front fork on. I'm not sure. Um, if I were to do this all over again, I would definitely use like a box or something to prop up the midsection so I could do all that work a lot easier. Something that's super sturdy where the bike's not gonna fall over or have two people. Um, you, again, had no instructions, so I had to kind of just guess with the wiring and there was a plug that had a cap, an end cap that didn't go into anything. Um, so I, I took that plug, took the tip off of it, the protective tip, and I plugged that into the, le well, my right now my left, or if you're looking at the screen, the right side of the screen, top top area, and uh, that worked, so that's cool. Um, I still haven't even looked at a picture on the internet of how everything was supposed to look. I just kind of freehanded it, whatever you want to call it, but I realized that this, this guy goes, it's like for a single rider type of thing, um, which I, I probably will put that on, uh, just not today, but I think it looks kind of cool and I'm, I don't think I'm going to be riding with other people. 
So yeah, um, you've got keys that go to the bike. One key opens a storage compartment. One key opens the battery um, so that you can drop the battery out. I did pull the battery out. Um, that was fine. It's pretty big and heavy. And this side has the charger for the battery and the on off switch. All right, there's that. Um, okay, now to the big problem. And this is definitely where the instructions missing are biting me in the butt. Uh, I'll, I'll just show you this. I don't, well, you know what? I don't know if I can do it with one hand. But this, this is not secure. It's, uh, there's the one bolt that goes from here down that grabs the, the tube that's in the middle here. And it's not sturdy. It's literally just one bolt. It could easily, easily break. Um, it's super wobbly. There needs to be something else there. And I really don't know what I'm missing. Um, the only part that didn't really go back in was this. This is a piece of plastic. This was on the fork on the metal pole. So I don't know if it has something to do with that, but literally everything else is in, in the bike other than some bolts and washers that, as I mentioned earlier, there's, there's nuts missing for the fairing. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit confused. I also have two of these left that are kind of like the, the guys that go in between here just so you don't scratch up your handlebars, but it didn't look like they really fit. Um, like this is the, uh, the speed selector right here to go faster, etc. And I would assume that one of them was for this, but it, it, does, it doesn't fit. Like if you try to put one in there, you won't be able to close it. Maybe I did something wrong. Someone can, I probably doing a bunch of things wrong. So people feel free to comment and correct me, but um, I got pretty far and rode the bike. Bike works. I do think that the handlebars are not correct because I, I think there's just too much tension going to this front brake caliper. Um, I might need to redo the wiring. I might need to take the handlebars off and like flip them over to get it correct, but that's crazy stiff. And this one is super squish. So probably need to do some brake work. They stop. I couldn't tell if they're rubbing or not. Um, but yeah, just uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe I need to somehow figure out how this goes back in there. I'm not sure. The collar, I did put the collar back in and yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to take it to a bike shop or call Saunders and say what's going on guys. So I'm gonna end the video. Um, I'll probably make another video of me riding the bike or something because I'm sure people want to see more of that. Uh, more of the, the bike riding itself and maybe I'll have some follow-ups with some of these problems I've had. So stay tuned.